So we, so we can start now. We have discussed about uh, the LVDT, that is a primary coil, two secondary coils connected in oppositions, and afterwards we connect to a circuit or some meter or like this. Say suppose RM is the meter <coughs> resistance there. And from there we had derived last day that ideally the E0, it was characteristics, ideal characteristics we had seen. That it is E0 and H, these characteristics are like this. So here at 0, it is a 0 voltage, we call it a null, but there is some leakage or I mean some capacitive due to different reasons, there could be some small voltage present there and maybe like this, but they are more or less linear there. And in this case, we have seen if x is equal to positive, the phi between the uh, primary and the E0, Ex and E0 is equal to 0 degree and phi is equal to 180 degree. It is uh, if they are primary and secondary in that if x is less than 0 there. And we have also seen that that is an ideal characteristics and that means if we do not consider the coil resistance, coil inductance and etc. And in actual characteristics, the frequency that phi is not actually 0 or 180 degree, we will tell it afterwards why it is necessary. This depends upon two situations where Rm is equal to infinity. We have derived those things last day and for that one we have seen that phi, the angle between primary and A changes from plus 90 degree to 0 degree that is A there as omega changes to infinity. That means 0 to infinity, if we goes that we go for higher frequencies there, then it would be the phase angle between the prime, <coughs> primary and secondary will be like this. And if Rm is finite, these derivations we have done it already. So, I am not please uh, doing it again. Please see the last day's lecture. So, phi changes from uh, plus 90 degree to minus 90 degree as omega increases from 0 to infinity, from 0 to infinity. This is the first observation we have seen it that this coil resistance and there are uh, expressions which we have already derived, I am not repeating it, from that expressions we can see it. 
So this is one thing we have seen. Another thing also, if we look at it, the earlier one for RM, for Rm is equal to infinity, we have seen that E0 by Eex, this is equal to omega into m1 minus m2 divided by root over omega tau p whole square plus 1. That is a mod of this one and this one is equal to as tau p is equal to lp by r. So from this expression also, we can see that as omega changes, the phase angle changes, not only that, the sensitivity for a particular x, this is for a particular x, this also do change. So what we can say is that the sensitivity I am not showing you the complicated expressions with, well, Rm is finite, you can also see. Sensitivity, apart from the other things we are, yeah, there, I mean, uh, apart from the inside, what are the parameters inside the LVDT, we are not going, depends on, number one is Rm, and number two is, Omega. So, that is the thing there and it can be shown that for a particular x, for fixed x, sorry, rather, okay, x itself there and I say it is a mod of E0, that is the magnitude only, we have a characteristics, that is the sensitivity. This depends upon omega as well as the Rm. So I am just talking, the, talking about the linear part only. So if it is 400 hertz, 1 kilo ohm load, say suppose this is the characteristics, we will find if it is 400 hertz and 1 mega ohm, 0.5 mega ohm load. The sensitivity increases. Further, if we go on increasing the sensitivity to 500 hertz and 1 kilo ohm load, it is like this and it would be further increased to say, oh, both of them, ah, this is a, okay, this will be 2500 hertz and 0 0.5 mega ohm load. So this is a thing that I can increase the sensitivity with the frequency and also sensitivity depends upon the load resistance. If the load resistance increases, the sensitivity is dependent on the load resistance. And that is the thing why that is one, one of the main reasons this excitation frequency, this omega or frequency of this one, we can see that higher the frequency, higher the sensitivity or we can say that if I fixed a target, a fixed frequency, uh, sensitivity to achieve the sensitivity, that sensitivity higher is the frequency to achieve the sensitivity. If the frequency is high, we can try it and basically with less number of turns and all the things there. So basically, if we look at it, 
in that case what is happening the size if the frequency is more is more the size is less so and if the size is less then definitely the dimensions and weight all the things will be less so that's why we will find that the often the frequency this lvdt or this sort of ca they are often used at a higher frequency 400 hertz 1 kilohertz or 2500 hertz or like this it is better to operate because to achieve the same sensitivity we can use smaller number of turns and etc there and as a result what we can have the <coughs> we can have a lower size on the lower weights and particularly where you use this instruments in uh, a uh, in aircraft often you know uh, in a cockpit a dry i mean the pilot has a stick which moves it the things there and yet that gives you the control and the directions and all the things and the position of the stick is detected by a lvdt so if lvdt is there and we always want because every gram of weight if we want to fly it costs more fuel so naturally it is always better to have it everything lighter as possible so naturally this sort of lvdt or some other type of instruments which are used in aircraft or space and all the applications they employ higher frequency compared to our 50 hertz or standard frequencies there so this is one important point and to use these things there okay but another thing also we have seen that Okay, uh, we have seen the second thing is that the phase angle is not exactly zero. So if we want, need to make the phase angle between primary and secondary to uh, make it zero. So in that case, what we require some compensating circuit required. So a compensating because I will see it, we will discuss it afterwards, that if the phase angle is not zero, then the phase sensitive detector and other things may often cause you a problem. So what we can say, the compensating circuit for phase adjustment required. So what are the compensating circuits for phase adjustments? These are often because we have seen it may be plus 90 to my, it may be leading output, secondary may be leading, but also the secondary may be lagging the primary. So for that one, the simple circuits are, one is, that's the thing there. We put some RC network, simple this one, for retarding a leading phase angle. Retarding means a leading phase angle. So this is the one here, yeah. another thing if it is lagging, so we need to have some sort of lead network, so this is the lead here. Yeah. So where it would be just the opposite, this is for for advancing 
a lagging network, lagging phase angle. So this is after LVDT, we can choose the LVDT, the frequency and etc. And apart from that, we need to see that once you make this thing, that output and input, if it is, uh, they, it is not, they are not in phase, that means either zero or 90 degree, then it would be, we need to have some adjustment and this compensation circuit. Apart from that, we need to also have what we have it, of course, let us assume that has been achieved. Let us assume that these circuits are there and so a we can say that is a compensating circuit then we need to have a phase sensitive detector we need to have a phase so suppose it is there and now we come to the phase sensitive detector if we recall the target is that if E excitation is like this. And if your, I call it, okay, this part itself we can call it, say it is easy though. Somehow we have done the compensations are like this there. So what is there? If it is the phase angle is 0 degree, maybe this is the thing there, your E0 is like this. What we require and what we have shown it using a, say suppose I call it V0 there. We have shown it last day that after using a diode bridge rectifier, we can make it as a full wave rectified way. Yeah. But the problem we had the basically the drop in that one. So if it is a, so here say suppose it is x is, is greater than 0. So what we have require that the output should be a full wave rectifier like this. That is your V0 after phase sensitive detection. This is for x is greater than 0 and definitely, of course, their amplitudes are the same. So <laughs> it is showing it declining but it is same here. And if x is less than 0, our goal is to achieve like this here. So that by putting a low pass filter or like this there, then I would be able to uh, I would be able to make it a negative DC voltage or a positive DC voltage. That's why we call it a direction sensitive or phase sensitive. That is our goal. But the question is that how would you achieve it? So we will just try to see the schemes where we can, how we can get a, to make a nice phase sensitive detector. There are many schemes. I would be showing you only one or two, but there are many schemes there. 
can in fact face sensitive demodulator or face sensitive detector is an integral part of many sense signal conditioning circuits there. So how to do it? So a face sensitive detector how to achieve it. Say suppose I call it E0, okay. I am just compensating circuit, you can neglect it for the time being, you say that they, they are perfectly compensated like this. Say suppose this is E0 and I put a block this has got a gain of plus or minus and it has got depends upon some voltage reference given by it. It has got certain voltage reference by this one. So and this one is given by what we said E excitation. So the prime it is excited by E excitation that is your reference voltage there and say suppose since it is a sinusoidal one we say it comparator. We have a comparator there. That means what we can say is that this is your V reference. So the gain is plus one if V reference is greater than 0 and gain is minus 1 if V reference is less than 0. Suppose I wanted to achieve, somehow I achieved it like this. So in that case we can see it that here, say suppose you compare it, say E0 and E excitation, okay. So, sorry, it should be, yeah, E0 and excitation. So, if E excitation is positive, this is also, E0 is also positive, then the gain is plus 1. So, E0 will be transmitted at this point. While, if E excitation is negative, what will be the gain? Gain is minus 1. So, gain is minus 1 means this portion will be inverted. This shaded portion will be inverted and go back like this. And again here E x is positive and this is also positive. We get it like this. Yeah. On the other hand, if to 180 degree, so what we can say, we can have a another da, a there, but instead of drawing that one, let us draw it with a red color chalk. This is for phi is equal to 180. So in this case, what is happening? If E x is positive, this remains negative. Because the gain is positive there. While if E x is negative, then the gain is negative. So this part would be folded back to this one. And similarly, this part. So finally, what we get is this one there. So what we are having, whatever we have seen or like this, after passing through a low pass filter or like this there, I can get a DC voltage. And very nice characteristics it would be. So after, so V0 DC versus X, it would be a positive voltage here and a negative voltage here. So naturally, we are being able to extend the range of it and working the LVDT for both positive and negative. And apart from that, it is linear there. And we are getting a DC voltage there. Agreed? Is it clear up to this? Or any question or any doubt? 
Any doubt or any question? So the question is that this is the crux of our yeah, their idea that we should have to build this scheme there. We will have to build this scheme and if we can make it that would be a nice scheme for phase sensitive detector. So I am removing this part. So, there are several ways for implementation. One is that this is the first way of implementation. So, phase sensitive detection, one we can say using a switch. So, this is a fast way for implementation of phase sensitive detector is that using a switch there. Okay. So, before I see how can I implement it, let us try to see, figure out what is the, if we have a circuit like this. And of course, obviously, whenever I discuss here, I assume the unless otherwise stated, I assume that the op amps are ideal. So, that is a nice one. Okay. Okay, this one I think better to make it, uh, yeah, mm, yeah. This one say suppose I have a buffer, I put it buffer in, to avoid loading and just I connect it here. So here it is say suppose V1 sine omega t. And this is coming from the secondary. And at this point, I put a switch. So, you know, you must have seen many switches. We can have it using MOS or uh, simple uh, uh, MOS circuits and like this there. And say, this is given by this V reference and it gives to you some suppose this is a comparator and this is another figure there that is the V2 sine of omega t. Okay? And this one, this switch, S is closed when V2T is greater than 0 and S is open. Oh, sorry, S is closed. Ah, S is closed when V2T and S is open when ah, this is a positive and this is closed rather I would put it in this way S is open I put it. Hmm. That is the all the things we can make it. And S is closed. When V2T is less than 0 there. Let us try to find out, say suppose all of the resistances are R. Now can you calculate what is the gain when S is 1, S is off, S is uh, open and what is the gain when S is closed. So, gain when 
S is open. What is the gain? Can you write? Tell me. If S is open, what is the value of the gain? Say, suppose I put it, this is here, Vx, some voltage there. What is the gain here? If S is open, anybody? Okay. If so, one plus or minus so plus one. Uh, how did you get it? So, so from v minus v. Yes. Huh? Two v minus v. So one for. Uh, Basically, you can do it in several ways. You can apply superposition and. Uh, Two inputs are given, one at the inverting input and input and one at the non-inverting one. One gain is plus two and one gain is minus one. So this two, we can say gain is equal to plus one. And when gain, if S is closed, that is obvious, then it is grounded. So naturally, it is at this point positive in the terminal is virtual grounded, grounded like this there. And as a result, gain is minus one. That's very interesting thing. You can see using the simple op amps or simple CMOS switches and etc. You can use them very nice way in the signal conditioning circuit. So very nicely what we can say that this is what we have it, it's a primary current, primary circuit I excite here. And so what we told is that whenever they are in phase, then this is positive. If it is positive, then it is uh, A there. Uh, this is open, so gain is plus one. And if it is negative, then gain is minus one. So this is also inverted. So it will make it plus one. So we will get all the cases. That means if it is again is plus one or minus one, depending upon this, the phase of it. And if they are the phase is 90 degree, I'm sorry, 180 degree shifted minus of this one, you will see that you will get it, whatever we have shown it, the phase sensitive detection. So that is a very nice way for doing it like this. Yeah. So this one can be implemented nicely using this. In fact, our yeah, they are in our lab also. Signal, I think maybe uh, in the simulations in the lab will be LVDT signal conditioning. One of the way you can see it, and you can see that one way, and you can select the op amp the CMOS switch and go for the more details like this. So this is one way. Another way is also there that is also interesting. That is using a multiplier chip. Or rather using an analog multiplier. What is analog multiplier? That is the thing is that, you know, most of the ICs we normally handle are linear ICs, but there are certain nonlinear uh, chips are also there. This multiplier is one of them. So what is there? So suppose two voltages are given and they come to a, this is your multiplier. And say, this is the supply voltage or VHDR of the multiplier there. Hmm. We get some V0 there and after that you push a low pass filter to get a DC V average there. Okay. Now suppose 
v1 is equal to v1 sin omega t and v2 is equal to capital V2 sin of omega t there. Okay. Now, uh, so this multiplier output V0, basically definitely T I should do it. This is also T, this is also T is given by V1 T into V2 T divided by Vs. That is a DC voltage normally we give it. So, that normally scales down the voltage. So, it simply multiplies to signal and scales down by a factor of Vs. So, very handy and very nice expressions there. So, what we can say that what is V0 in this case suppose what is V0? So, in this case phi is equal to 0 degree. So, what is V0 t? It is some constant definitely that V s and like this it would be there into 1 minus. So, sin square omega t what we can say is 1 minus cosine of 2 omega t. Agreed? So, this constant includes V1, V2, V s and all the things there and also some half factor because it would be sin square omega t and this will be like this. So, V0 average it will be is equal to k, k nothing but k is equal to V1, V2 divided by 2 Vs like this. So, this is your V1 t is your uh, voltage of the primary at secondary and this is the voltage of the primary. So, voltage of the secondary changes with the displacement and if they are the x is positive, phase is positive. So, V average will be like this with positive voltage. And obviously, if phi is negative, that means phi is 180 degree, V0 average will be equal to minus of V1, V2 divided by twice Va. So, obviously, you can easily see that is our desired characteristics. What was our desired characteristics? That is your V0 average or V0 DC versus 6. Hence, we can have it in nicely a straight line characteristics. So, there are many actually we will find it this multiple analog multiplier has got many applications often here there and this some chips are there say suppose analog multiplier AD 633. One of course I do not remember all the names so only one uh, name which is very handy and like this AD 633 is that here they are by which we can nicely make a uh, signal conditioning circuit with the LV DT there. So, that is the A there and in fact there are Signal conditioning ICs for LVDT are also available. Say, so, suppose few names I am giving example AD598, AD698. So, I request all of you, particularly IA, to go through the data sheets and just Google search the multiplier circuit, uh, analog multiplier IC or signal conditioning IC for LVDT, you will find a more interesting applications and more interesting configurations over LVDT there. Okay. Any question up to this?
Any question? So lastly, I will go back. So these are the using. So we can say that this is a signal conditioning circuit. Okay, I have a question now. Say suppose V1 and V2, we have only considered that they are either, that is a primary or secondary or like this, they are either in phase or out of phase. But suppose if V1 is equal to, or rather basically, if phi is equal to 90 degree, I have just put an example of like this. It will not be 90 degree, but for the case of simplicity, I just consider that is the primary and secondary voltage will be 90 degree. What will be the V0 DC characteristics versus X? Can you tell me using this amplifier? I mean the multiplier. Can you tell me? What will be the V0 DC? Suppose I have it. So here it is. V2 is sine omega t plus say 90 degree. Or like this there. So in that case, what will happen? Can you tell me? What will be the V0 DC? So we can say it is V2 cosine twice, uh, cosine omega t. And this one, we can say that, okay, plus minus sine, I just simply ignore this one. So here it is V1 into V2 by Vx it will be V1 capital V1 capital V2 divided by 2 Vx and here it is sine of twice omega t. And if we take the average of it, so this is your V0 t and if we take the average of it, V0 dc will be equal to 0. So that means it will not if phi is equal to 90 degree, it will not respond at all. Or if in, even if the uh, phase angle, say suppose not exactly 90 degree or like this there, it will be, if it is 45 degree or like this, the sensitivity or the slope here will be much smaller like this. So that may always cause you some error. And that's why, it is important to ensure that the phase angle should be between primary and secondary be zero. If it is not or otherwise, if it is not either use a compensating circuit or in fact choose a frequency such that the phase angle is almost equal to zero between primary and the secondary. Is it all right? So these are the things, intricacies we must understand and basically we'll see it that for any circuit elements or sensors like inductive sensors, capacitive sensors, LVDT and all sorts of things, we have seen that we need to use some sort of phase sensitive detector. And so phase sensitive detector is a very popular device here and also for many other areas. So this is very important. And last question before I conclude, maybe we would be answering that one in the next class. Suppose I have a LVDT, which is a primary excite here, there, and Forget about all the non-idealities.
say suppose v a x is equal to say suppose capital e sign of basically it's an excitation so i say it is omega c is the excitation so e x is equal to capital e sign of omega c t j and this x t is also varying sinusoidally that it is x m sign of omega m t and obviously that means say suppose i have given an ex excitation of say suppose 100 kilo uh, 100 hertz or 1 kilo hertz or like this but this plunger which is connected to a float or something maybe for measurement of wave or like this there of displacement of the wave that this is also vibrating at a frequency of omega m and obviously this omega m may be 10 hertz or 100 uh, about a few hertz but this may be kilohertz there so we can say that omega m is much smaller than omega c there now suppose this one i put it to a cr now the question is that what would be the waveform would you be able to see anybody can you tell me my question is that if i connect ac give ac excitation to the primary and this plunger is also moving sinusoidally at a frequency of omega mt then what would be the output if we see the output waveform if we see it in a CRO. Anybody? Sir, uh, I am just making a guess but I think uh, could it be the difference uh, sinusoidal but the difference of those two frequencies? Uh, not exactly. Uh, think of it. So basically, what you can say that if we, so you can say that this is a function of this displacement. So you can say that this is the output voltage is the function of two things. One is the excitation and one is the displacement. Yeah. So suppose two sinusoidal signals are superimposed by some means or like this. How it will look like? Have you heard of or AM signal, amplitude modulated signal? Yes, sir. sir How the does envelope, it look like? Sir, the envelope will be a sinusoid or some other signal. That's right. So there would be some envelope like this. And this frequency is omega M. And inside it, This is the frequency is basically omega c there. So that is very interesting thing there that omega c and omega m. So here it would be an amplitude modulated wave because if we consider that primarily these two will be a functions of both of them and there will be a multiplying effect here. So you will get a amplitude modulated wave there. So, what is our opinion, our objective is to extract the actual X signal out of it here. Yeah. So, that how to do it, please think of, we will discuss it in the next class.